If you're a home cook looking to go pro, this is the episode for you. Today we've got four super tasty recipes and seven wine pairings based on four great Southern cooks. Let's get into it. Ready or not, it's Family Meal. Welcome to Family Meal, where we make memory-making meals with a splash of wine. This chilled caviar pie is a great starter, and it's so good that even my friends that don't really like fish ate it up. You can make this dish a day ahead and hold it in the fridge so that it solidifies. The original recipe calls for lump fish roe, but I'm using masago because that's what I can get around here. Start with the eggs. They need to be hard boiled. When cool, rice them into a medium sized mixing bowl. Butter your dish and firmly press the riced eggs onto the bottom and sides to form a crust. Then you'll cover the plate with plastic wrap and refrigerate for about 24 hours. After that, it's time to make the filling. Carefully mix the caviar with the lemon juice and spread it evenly over the chilled eggs. Then stir the sour cream and spoon it evenly over the caviar. Cover it again with plastic wrap and let it chill for at least one hour. Sprinkle the top with a little paprika and decorate the pie with the garnish you like. I added some nigella seeds, diced cucumbers, and dill with mint to the top. Serve this on crispy toast points. And don't forget the bubbly. We have two Italian Proseccos to pair with this dish. These are bright, lower alcohol wines made from the Glera grape. They're both 2018s and from Valdo Biadene, a town in the Veneto region of Northern Italy. Our first wine recommendation for this dish is Angelo Bortolan Prosecco. It's nutty and slightly floral. Our second recommendation is Bisol Crede Prosecco Superiore. It's also floral, but has more of a mineral quality. These light wines are great with this creamy dish that tastes of the sea. Watercress soup is a classic dish. It's very simple to make. You only need a pot and a blender. First, coarsely chop the watercress, onion, and celery to get all the veggies prepped. Bring everything except the cress and starch to a boil. Then add the sugar and two cups of the chicken stock. After everything is boiling and very hot, add the cornstarch and the remaining chicken stock and stir well. Place it over medium heat and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Then you'll stir in the cream, butter, and salt. Simmer for another three to five minutes, stirring just occasionally. It can be served hot or you can let it chill in the refrigerator for a refreshing summer soup. Remember to garnish each serving with a sprig of watercress. You can serve it simply like I'm doing, but it would also be good with a barbecued oyster and horseradish. Our wine picks for this second course are the Piro Pan Suave Classico from 2019. Then we have Pra Auto Suave Classico from 2019. So they're both from the same year and taste of apples and pears. Both of these wines are from the Veneto too and are made from the Garganega grape. This is one of the most famous white wines in Italy. Serve this wine chilled with a chilled soup course. It'll be delicious. You should have heard the oohs and ahs when I brought this dish to the table. We have some delicious braised short ribs with handmade egg noodles. Preheat your oven to 350 for one hour. Then coat the bottom of a large oven-proof pan with oil. Season the ribs generously with salt and pepper, then dust with the flour and place it in the oiled casserole. Cook it uncovered for about one hour. Stir and turn the ribs occasionally so that they brown evenly. Skim off the excess oil and add enough water to cover the bottom of the casserole. Now cover your pan tightly and let the ribs cook for another hour until tender. These ribs need gravy. Add some butter, the stock from your ribs, and some seasonings and flour to make a rich sauce to pour over the ribs. To finish the dish off, place your noodles on a serving platter, top with the ribs, pour on the gravy, and garnish with chopped parsley. Serve it immediately. You can serve it with sour cream and red pepper flakes too as accompaniments. The wines with this dish are two bold old vines Infandales from Lodi. This is a warm wine region in the Sierra foothills with lots of old vines, older than 20 years old. If you like a black pepper flavor in your wine, check out this area. We suggest the Ironstone Old Vines Infandale 2018 and the Predator Old Vines Infandale 2019. They both pair well with rich beef dishes like braised short ribs and gravy. These are amazing red wines with hints of pepper and dark berries. This dessert will push all your flavor buttons. It's sweet and sour, refreshing, chilled and zesty. It's also got creamy and fruity elements. The base is a mint ice, 
a very southern dessert. So let's start there. Now the first step is placing the sugar in a large saucepan. Add enough water to dissolve the sugar. Then you'll cook it over moderate heat until it boils. After a while, it'll get syrupy. Strip the leaves from the mint, wash them, and fold them in a clean cloth. Beat the mint with a hammer or your hand until it's pulpy. Add that to the syrup. Let the mint steep until you get the level of mint flavor you want. That's when you add a bit more water and let the syrup cool. Add lemon juice to the cooled mixture. You don't want to add it while the syrup is hot because that will make the ice less tangy. To dress this dessert up, we're going to add some garnishes. Mint leaves, lime zest, perfectly ripe diced peaches, and a drizzle of sweetened condensed milk. Now it's firing on all cylinders. Tokaji is a great dessert wine with stone fruit flavors, so it goes well with peach or apricot desserts. It comes from the Tokaj regions of Hungary and Slovakia. The most common grape in this wine is ferment, which is where the stone fruit flavors come from. The Tokaji I chose is from Hungary. It's a Royal Tokaji Late Harvest from 2017, a very sweet wine that can be enjoyed alone or with fruity desserts, but always serve it chilled. All four of these chefs were working in Georgia in the 80s, and they all learned on the job. None went to culinary school. By the time this book was written, they each had 30 or more years of experience working as pro cooks. Daisy Redman, who inspired the short ribs in this episode, was a caterer. This seems to be one of the most common ways for home cooks to go pro. Milton Williams, whose book I cooked from in August of 2020, went the catering route too. You can see that video here. It's also what Carla Hall did, the famous celebrity chef you might know from Top Chef. Beatrice Mize, William Mann, and Ruth Jenkins were all personal chefs. This is the other route many home cooks use to go pro. The dishes in this book aren't quote unquote fancy. They're the kind of comforting dishes you want after a long day. Try out these recipes and let me know if this is the kind of comfort food you think you can make a business from. All the recipes are at winosity.com. The next episode will be based on Sylvia's family cookbook. She ran Sylvia's restaurant on Malcolm X Boulevard in Harlem for about 50 years. It started out as a small restaurant, but today can seat over 450 people. These are recipes you'll definitely want to check out. See you next time.